So this is the goal today. We'll do a brief overview of Turnitin and its functionality. You guys will all create a Turnitin submission link. You will design a rubric and you will use that rubric to mark a paper. You're going to submit an assignment on behalf of a student. Look at the similarity report and the AI writing indicator. And then the majority of today's session will be spent on marking and giving feedback, including using the rubric to mark. Right at the end, I will just show you the analytics dashboard available in Turnitin um, and then point you in the direction of some support and resources. So the brief overview, Turnitin is a web-based assessment submission tool that also has um, a marking and feedback tool. The key features are the text matching software, which spits out a similarity report for students. And it's actually UQ policy that students have access to that similarity report. It has an AI writing indicator tool, and we'll go through all of these online marking features as well. One of the um, big benefits of Turnitin is that it supports a variety of file upload types. So students can submit PDFs, um, Word docs, PowerPoints, um, a, a big variety. And there's the logo, and that logo is important because it appears in Blackboard in the submission link as well. All right, now what I need you to do is go to learn.uq.edu.au. Of course, make sure you're logged in. And then you will have a workshop that's called, actually, I think it's called the Turnitin Online Workshop with a number next to it. And um, that will appear in your course list. So I'll just come back here. So if I click on courses, I'll just get rid of all this. If you can't find it, just make sure you're in courses, go to the search field, type in Turnitin or Turnitin Online, and hopefully the course will appear. So I'll just give you um, a little bit of time to get yourself sorted there. And by all means, oh, Sarah's had to go. That's Sorry, fine. Ruth. Thanks. No problem. We understand. All right, how's everyone going in learn.uq getting their course site ready for, or I should say the training site for today's session? And Nathan's just posted in the chat that he's able to help you if you send him your username. So I'm going to click into mine now that I'm using to demonstrate some things today and it will look like this. Okay, can I get some feedback now? Is everyone ready to continue? Thumbs up is fine, thank you. Super, thanks, Jermaine, Sebastiano. Anybody else need help? Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Daniel. Mohammed, welcome. Hopefully you are in learn.uq.edu.au and you're able to access your Turnitin online workshop training site. I'll just wait for Kelly, Mohammed, and Rina. Are you ready, guys? Okay. All right, I'll carry on then. And by all means, um, make use of Nathan while he's here to get you in if you're having any problems. Okay, this is the course site that we're going to use. Um, uh, it's just learn.uq. Um, edu.au Kelly. Um, Nathan can post the chat in the chat for you. Thanks. 
All right, now please keep in mind that all of you would have received an email with the necessary resources for today's workshop. So I'm sorry that we have not had the time to update some of these resources on this training site. Um, please ignore them to a degree and rely on the resources that were sent to you in the email calendar invitation. Okay, hopefully everyone is there. So we are now ready to create a submission link. And in that submission link, we will be taken to Turnitin, where we will input all of the detail on the left, such as the title, the maximum grade, etc. In Blackboard environment or in learn.uq, we'll have to consider the description and all of the help links that we provide to the student. We have to make sure that the Turnitin link opens in a new window. And of course, in Blackboard, that's where we check the grade center. Here's how it's going to flow. Firstly, in Blackboard, you'll be clicking on Build Content and you'll choose Turnitin. The next step will be taken to Turnitin where you'll input all of those details. And then later on in the session, much later, we'll come back to Blackboard to check the Grade Center column. All right, here we go. Everyone, in your Turnitin training site, please click on Assessment in the course menu on the left. When you're in the assessment area, you should see the assessment summary at the top, which should be exactly the same as the course profile. Then go to assessment one, the critical film analysis and click into the folder. And notice we are showing you today best practice each assessment should have its own folder. So I'm clicking into that assessment one now. Right, any problems getting to this point? Okay, I'm carrying on. All right. Now notice the Turnitin submission link should always be at the top followed by all the associated documents that students require to complete the assessment. All right, do you remember from the list, we're going to build content, we're going to choose Turnitin. Build content, choose Turnitin. I'm clicking into that now, just click along with me. And notice it has automatically opened up a separate tab in the Turnitin environment that is integrated with the UQ LMS. All right, the first field you have to consider is the assignment title. Please consider that the title is meaningful for the students and that it matches the course profile title for this particular assessment. We also advise that you make sure it's very clear to the students, this is the link they use to submit. So submission link in um, capitals at the end. All right, the next field we need to do is the assignment instructions. Now this will appear underneath the link in Blackboard. Sorry, I'm just losing things over here. All right, so for example, this is um, what you can put into, I'm putting it into the chat as well. This is an example of what most course coordinators would put into their, sorry, I've just lost my mouse, here we go. Um, what most course coordinators would put into the instruction field. Oh, it says my message is too long, sorry. Did that first um, chat come through, everyone? It did come through. Okay, cool. 
Now, I'm just going to leave that for now and put it back in Blackboard. But you need to give students some um, clear instructions there that this is where they click on the link to submit their assessment. And I'll do a bit more on that um, to give you the links to the Turnitin guides for students back in Blackboard. The next area we want to consider is the maximum grade. So we urge you to mark out of 100 and then use the um, Blackboard Grade Centre to um, weight the score later. So this gives you more options when you're marking and makes your marking more nuanced. Of course, many course coordinators choose simply to mark out of the same weighting as on the course profile, for example, if it's 40%. So we understand that. What you want to avoid is a low max grade. All right, the fourth thing you have to enter at this point is all the dates. We're going to leave the start date as today, so the link becomes active immediately. The due date, of course, is when um, after that point, the students will be marked as late. The calendar functionality is a little bit um, awkward to use. I'm going to make it um, the first week after they get back from mid-semester break, and I'm going to make it the Friday, so that's 4th of October, and I'll make it 9 a.m. You can use this clock functionality here. Some people find it a bit awkward. It's up to you. So I've made mine due on the 4th of October this semester at 9 a.m. Of course, 5 p.m., whenever you want. Midnight is fine. Now, we do have some particular um, advice around the feedback release date. If you have a large team of markers, we recommend putting this as late as possible, and then you can always bring it forward when your markers have finished and you're ready to release the grades. So, in this particular case, I checked the academic calendar and, um, oops, sorry, the last day of exam period is the 16th of November. And I think the finalisation of grades is something like the 28th or something of November. So that still gives you a couple of weeks before grades are actually um, released to students through Signet. And as I said, you can always come back in and make that earlier. Okay, so at this point, all you've done to create your link is the title, some instructions, which you can edit back in Blackboard, consider the maximum grade and put in all the dates. Now we're going to look at the optional settings. So back on this page, everyone with me, hopefully, on the tab, I hope you haven't closed it. You're now going to reveal and expand the optional settings. All right, hopefully you have been able to find the optional settings. Okay, you're going to choose the standard paper repository to make the most of the huge database of student papers that um, Turnitin has amassed. You will allow late submissions, and of course the Grade Centre column will show you clearly who is late. We're going to tick a attach a rubric for now, but we're not going to do anything yet. Just make sure that is checked so we can work with it later. Now let's consider the settings for the similarity report. This is one of the best features and one of the main reasons we use Turnitin. We must have this checked to generate the reports for students. And notice in this drop down option, you have three options and you want to choose the middle one on my screen that the reports are generated immediately and students can keep resubmitting until the due date. Now, there's a little bit of a warning here. Students will get three chances to submit and receive the similarity report immediately. If they want to submit a fourth time, 
they'll have to wait 24 hours. So that's why I put that explanation in the instruction field. Of course, it's very unlikely that they'll want to do it that many times. And it's UQ policy that if you're using Turnitin, you must allow students to view their reports. Some course coordinators like to exclude these here. You can say a number of words for the small match sources. However, our generic recommendation is to leave that unchecked because you can filter out the bibliographic materials when you're actually marking. All right, please leave these three checked so that the software will match your student submission against student papers submitted, web content and um, academic journals. Okay, at this point in time, what I'd like you to do is now access the calendar invitation for today's session. And I want you to find the assignment template. Find the assignment template. In order to not inflate the similarity percentage score, if your particular submission is a business case, for example, or some sort of report where every student's going to have the same titles and subheadings or almost the same, um, in this case, you may choose to upload a template document to turn it in so that the similarity score matching will not be unnecessarily high. So upload template, choose the file, now, I'm going to a different area to you. You're going to get yours from the email. Hopefully, you've saved them to your desktop or somewhere like that. So, mine will look a little bit different because I'm going into our staff area for this workshop. So, this one, the assignment template. So I'll attach that now, and you can see that um, the file name is there, so I know it's attached. And of course, that's totally optional. We're, Nathan and I are in and out of courses all the time, where I think the majority don't um, attach a template. Uh, it depends on the nature of the assessment. All right, I'm going to press Submit, and here we go. And then very quickly, you will get a success message. And it feels a bit weird that you just close this off. Come back to the LMS or learn.uq training site. And what you're going to do is refresh the LMS page or tab, I should say. Just checking in the chat if anyone's having any problems. So now I'm going to go back into the assessment area, back into my assessment one folder, and ignore this one at the top because that's the one that we put there as a demo. You're going to come all the way down and yours will be at the bottom. So don't do anything just yet. If you recall from my um, PowerPoint, we want to do something in Blackboard. We want to check that the link opens in a new window. So don't click into it. Click on the right hand down arrow and edit. So you can see a lot of this information has auto-populated from the Turnitin integration. We chose max points 40. It's visible to students because we put the date as now. Our instructions are there. That will need a little bit of formatting. And we want to come down to this area, open in new window. And click yes. 
We want to make this accessible for our students. So it's much better if they can have turn it in in a new window and keep the Blackboard LMS open at the same time. And just before we leave this edit area, now we're going to put a little bit of extra information into the instruction area. Okay, so I'm going to put that also in the chat and then I'm going to quickly do my uh, editing here. I hope these links come through in the chat. If they don't, just walk through it with me and um, at least you're learning what to do. I'll just make that a little bit more clear. Of course, that looks a little bit dodgy. Let me just make them all the same size. Mm -hmm. That looks a bit better. And submit. So this is my submission link at the bottom. As I told you before, best practice is to put all the submission links, whether they be for Turnitin or Gradescope or Buddy Check or whatever, put them at the top. So now I'm moving mine to the top. So students can be in no um, doubt at all where they submit their assessment. All right, the next thing we're going to do is work with a rubric. Can I just get another thumbs up from everyone? Is everyone okay? Thanks, guys. I hope this is useful up to this point. Appreciate the, the help and feedback there. All right, now that we've edited and make sure, thanks, Emma. Um, now that we've made sure it can open in a new window and we've filled out some description and, and you know, advice for students, we're going to go back into Turnitin by clicking on the link. And by the way, guys, I will give you a mini break halfway. So um, just bear with me for now. So I just clicked on the link again and I've been brought straight into this Turnitin assignment area. Okay, go over to the top right-hand corner and click on the cog or the settings icon. So you will always come into that assignment inbox where the list of students is there and their submissions. Obviously, you can't see anything yet, but you always come into that list of students. To access your settings, go to the cog icon. So there's everything we've put in already. Now we're going to deal with the rubric. We clicked attach a rubric, but we haven't chosen one yet. And you guys haven't designed one yet. So here we go. Just have a look at mine to begin with. The rubrics that you create in Turnitin belong to the user. So only you can see the ones that you have created. Now in Nathan's and my case, we have um, you know, been involved with loads of course coordinators, helped them set up their rubrics. We've done models for them. So we have a lot in our list. You may only see the um, dummy ones that Turnitin make available to you. So here's one I've prepared before, the A1 critical film analysis, and I've attached it to this assessment. You don't have that yet. So you guys, please launch the rubric manager. Now I'm just going to come over to a different one here. And at this point, I need you to access your resources and find the assignment criteria. So back to those um, resources we sent you in the calendar invitation. Can everyone open on a Word document a different screen would be easier for you to work with. The criteria, please. Now, 
Now, when you open the rubric manager, it will open in a totally different window. So just be aware of that in case it's hidden somewhere. And I'm just going to wait to give you a chance to make sure you can see the rubric manager, which is the top of my screen right now. And you have that Word document ready to go. Does anybody need a hand? Does anybody want me to put the document in the chat if you can't find it quickly? Thanks, Emma. Everybody else all right? Thanks, Muhammad. All right, based on Emma and Muhammad, I'll continue for now. Thanks, Daniel. All right. So be clear on the goal here. We are creating a rubric to attach to this particular assessment. There's the hamburger menu in the top left. Please click there. And you're going to click on create new rubric. Go ahead and do that. Okay, I have been trained very well by Nathan, who's here with me, and I know I need to really emphasise now that Turnitin does not allow mark ranges. So there are a couple of workarounds, but the most common use case at UQ is to use the percentage rubric scoring. So can you see there are three um, sort of toggle areas at the bottom? There's the percentage one. This one allows you to customise the score possible in each cell. But uh, to be honest, I haven't seen many people use that one. Have you, Nathan? It, it gets used occasionally. It's not overly popular. Yeah, so this one is the best, um, the, the most common that we see, yes. Now, there's also this one which allows you uh, more scope for descriptors and being more qualitative than numeric. And there is also, don't click on this one, but just allow me to show you, there is also a grading form. Now, the grading form um, is a good option if you do need your marking to be very specific and you want the markers to enter um, within a range. So I won't show you that just now. I'm going to stick with um, what we're working on here, which is the classic most common one, the percentage. Now, what I need you to do is go to the um, top right where there is a white plus symbol, and we're going to add some more columns. Take a look at your Word document, the criteria. How many columns can you see? You can type in the chat or yell it out. Has anyone got that Word document open? Eight, exactly. Thank you. So can you add five more columns to the one that we can see on the screen? Oops, I've added too many, so I'm going to delete my scale nine. Oh, sorry, I keep losing my mouse with all these screens in this pod studio that I'm in. One second. Ah, I got it. Okay. <laughs> All right, looking at that Word document, we're now going to work with the criteria column, which is on the left. At the moment, we have four criteria in our defaults one, but uh, when you look at the Word document, there are only um, three, I believe. There's critical understanding, supporting evidence, and quality of writing. So we're going to come down to this one and delete it. See the little bin icon? Just delete that one. Let's make this a bit bigger now. Okay, dealing with the criterion descriptors. 
the title has um, a very small character allowance. So you want to choose the key noun for students, such as understanding, and input that one. Underneath, you can write a lot more of the issue, something like that. You can write a lot more underneath the title, but the title is only, uh, was it 18 characters? I can't remember. So you've got to choose the key noun. Now you need to weight the criteria so that they add up to 100 down here in the total. So I think from memory, this one was 50. The next one was evidence. So work with me now. You want to get into a, a good rhythm here so that it doesn't take you, you know, too long to set this up. Evidence, I think, was 40, wasn't it? And then finally, we had writing quality or writing or quality. I'm going to put quality of writing and expression. Oops. It's really tiny. And that's worth 10. Now, I'm going to make a mistake here and put 20. And you can see down here, everyone with me, it says that it's worth 110, which is wrong. So it will not allow me to save this rubric. So let's go back in and edit that to 10. Now it says 100, so I know it will work. All right, I'll just show you what to do quickly now, and then I want you to go ahead and just practice. I'll only give you a couple of minutes, but as I said, you want to get into a rhythm here. Obviously, once you do this once, it's done, all right? You can duplicate it to edit it and use it again or change something. You can also import and export from a colleague. So um, you won't always have to be creating them from scratch like this, but it's important in the workshop to show you how. So this one uh, is a grade of seven plus, and it is a perfect score of 100. And I'm just going to my other screen to cut and paste the first descriptor here. So I'll just let you play around for a couple of minutes. Um, I'm still here. I'll leave my video on. Nathan's here if you need a hand. Um, just do your best. And by the way, these percentages are midpoint because remember, I've tried to stress to you for the percentage rubric here, there's no marking within a range. So we choose the midpoint and that's university wide. Also consider your course profile and your school assessment policy. You know, students can go onto the course profile and see the, um, the allocation of marks in the UQ grade one to seven. So you need to match your school as well. But this is the most common way that we recommend and that we see the most. So five is 70%, four is 57. I'm just working across here. Oops. Three is 47. <clears throat> Two is 37. And total fail gets 15%. I've even seen um, another column after um, the one for absolutely zero, nothing, you know, no evidence to, to support this submission or something like that. Now, we don't have a lot of time to do, this isn't a copy, cut and paste session practice. So maybe if, you, if everyone could just fill in four descriptors, um, I'll be happy with that and let me know when you're ready. I'm going to fill in a two on the top. And I'll just do a couple more, a three for the evidence one. We'll do a seven for quality. 
And of course, um, students need to have the same marking criteria sheet available for them to understand your expectations on Blackboard as well. And I'll do a five here. All right, is that enough time for everyone just to sort of practice for a little bit? Now, there's one very important thing that I've forgotten up to this point, which is the rubric name. So I strongly recommend you do your course code, the assessment number, and then the same name as your um, course profile. If you don't have enough um, space, uh, you might have to ditch the course code. Okay, even though that one's not finished, I'm going to save it. So you won't see much change here because we're still in the rubric manager. But what you will see is now this one has been added to the list somewhere. I might have to go out. Oh, no, there it is there, the A3 critical film analysis. Now, just before we leave this window, I want to show you how to uh, import and export it. And then you would send it to a colleague for them to use as well, or vice versa, if your course coordinator sends you a rubric. So I'm not going to jump through all the steps here. I just want to make sure that you can see um, it is an RBC file. The extension is .rbc. So it's not a file that you'll ever open. You just send it to your, your marking team. And then they choose the same icon here to import it into their own library. Now, please don't stress if you if you click on one, and can you see down the bottom here, it won't allow me to edit. Don't stress about that at all. It's very easy to get around this. You just go to your hamburger menu. And up the top, you duplicate the rubric, give it a distinct name, and then go for your life and edit away, delete the original one. All right, I am going to now exit out of the rubric manager, but oh, notice Ruth? I'm exiting. Yes, hi. Uh, can I just ask a question? So with the exporting, sure. it exports it as an RBC type document, is it? So... Yes. What can we open that with? Oh, you won't open it. Okay. You will just share it with someone. Or if someone sends you one, you come into this window and you import it. Oh, okay. So they can't be exported as um, like Word or Excel sort of type documents? Uh, not that I believe so. Nathan might know. No, it's a it's a Turnitin specific file format. It no only worries. applies for Turnitin. Yeah, no worries. So, and that's also Kelly why um, I'm saying it's best practice to have that Word or PDF of exactly the same wording on Blackboard somewhere for students to be able to read it and understand. Okay, thanks, Kelly. All right, I'm going to exit out of the Rubric Manager now and come back to the Turnitin settings. And now you should be able to see your film analysis rubric in the list for you to attach to this particular assignment submission link. So just ignore that mine says A1, um, you'll be attaching the one that you've just created. And I'm going to come down the bottom and press submit.
settings were saved successfully. I'm going to exit here, come back to the LMS, and just for my own peace of mind, I'm going to refresh again. All right, we've done the optional settings. Now, why do people like Nathan and I encourage you to use the rubric? It's to support that um, notion of criterion referenced assessment where students understand better their expectations to reach a seven or a six or you know whatever their goal is. Um, it also enhances reliability of the marking and feedback and consistent practice among the teaching team. And I've been a part of teaching teams where um, there's much greater ownership by the markers of the rubric if they all get together and create it together and really think about the distinctions between the descriptors. Um, and it's our hope that it reduces students' confusion and queries about the mark that's allocated to them after they receive their results. All right, please make sure that that uh, open in new window is done and that the instructions are clear for the students. I've already been through that. And I just want to say a quick point about this section in Blackboard. Don't worry about that because you've already set your dates in Turnitin, which will control the um, date settings in Blackboard. So that's talking to each other very nicely and you shouldn't have to worry about those. Okay, well done everyone. We're almost ready for a break. And now we're going to submit a sample assignment to our Turnitin submission link. The sample assignment that I'm going to ask you to submit is also in that list of resources. There's a student A document and a student B. Can I be very annoying and ask you to give me a thumbs up one more time can everybody see the student A and student B document? Thanks, Kelly. Anybody else? Sorry, I can't see everyone all at once on my other screen. Cheers, Emma, Michael, great. Okay. Now, if your family name begins with A to L, can you please click on the student A when you submit? If your family name begins from M to Z, you can use the student B one. Now, when you click in, actually, you're not even going to click into the documents. I'll just sh show you what I've done. Um, there's a paragraph from ABC News Justin website yesterday that I put on there. Then there is a section of text from Wikipedia. Then there are a couple of paragraphs from the Conversation website. And finally, I use the Gen AI um, tool that is authorized by the university, which is the Copilot Enterprise on Microsoft Edge. I used that yesterday to ask um, the AI tool to generate some text. So that is the fourth um, item of text on those documents. So what you're going to do is click into your Turnitin link again and you're going to submit on behalf of a student. So let's go into our Blackboard course, into assessment, click into assessment one folder, critical film analysis. Your submission link should be at the top. Click into it. And because you're coming in as an instructor, you will automatically come into the assignment inbox. Now, let me stress, normally you will not do this. It's a very rare situation where a student has had some major technical disaster and has had to send it to you via email and you submit on behalf, but it is not accepted practice. So this is just for the purpose of this workshop. So submit on behalf of a student Choose the student, continue, choose the file. Now, at this point, you're seeing exactly the student experience. This is what your students see exactly on this um, overlay window. So choose the file. You'll be choosing from 
the resources I sent you. So my last name starts in W, so I'm choosing student B, and you will click open. Then this step is really important. The student will upload and review, and before they click submit, they will see a preview. The preview shows them the file name. So just in case at this point they think, oh my God, I chose the wrong one, they can cancel and do it again. It also shows them the word count. Um, now, your tutors should be um, educating them about that word count, whether it includes their um, bibliographic entries, um, depending on what referencing software or add-in they've used. They can do a quick preview of the pages if they want, just before they click Submit. And then, can you guys go ahead and click Submit to turn it in? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to show you something on a different page. But can everyone now go ahead and click Submit to turn it in? Okay. Everyone all right? Daniel, Jermaine, Sebastiano, Emma, Michael, Muhammad, Kelly. If you're okay there and you have successfully, have you got a success message that you have successfully uploaded the student's submission? And we're just going to take a brief break. Is everyone okay with that? Super. All right. I'm just going to pause the recording. When you come back, we're going to switch gears and do all the marking and feedback and understanding the similarity report. Thanks, everyone. I'll give you four minutes. And I'll just ask if, um, if you're actually alive. Everyone's still there? Thanks, Jermaine. Oh, what a relief. Nathan's still here. Good. I'll just move to the next slide. Hopefully everyone will be back very soon. <clears throat> Okay, so we're up to point four in this workshop. We won't spend a lot of time on four and five, but it's um, worth showing you some features in the similarity report and the writing indicator. And we'll spend the majority of our time together now on point six, which is marking and giving feedback on the submission you just uploaded. Okay, I really need to continue because of the time. So let's now consider the um, uh, similarity report. Thanks, Daniel, totally understand. Thanks for your message. All right, um, it would be remiss of me to not remind you of the difference between text matching and plagiarism. Turnitin uh, is very clear on its purpose. It does not indicate plagiarism. It only indicates the percentage of the text in the student submission that matches the work of another. Of course, I'm preaching to the converted and you know that plagiarism is when this is done without the proper acknowledgement, credit or attribution. So Turnitin likes to stress in their webinars, it's your job to find the plagiarism, not the software tool. So firstly, um, the color coding is only an indication of the proportion, the percentage of the text that matches something in their existing database. So when you first enter your Turnitin assignment inbox, you'll see these colors and that's what they mean. That's all, it's a numeric indicator in a visual form. So yellow is 25 to 49% of matching text. Now, does this mean that the student has plagiarized? No. In our workshops, we always show this example. The one on the left that only has 5% matching is a direct copy and paste from someone else's work. 
without any citations or reference list entry. The one on the right has 30% of matching, but is perfectly acceptable, even though it has 30% of matching. And that's because the marker would go and investigate and find out that the essay question is included in the percentage. The citation has been done by the student typing, so it's coming up in the um, uh, percentage as well. There's a couple of quotes, but the student has used speech marks, has cited correctly, and the bibliographic entries are also included in the percentage. So even though it's 30%, this one on the right is perfectly acceptable. And the one on the left that's 5% is actually a case of academic misconduct. Uh, now let's go into your um, Turnitin assignment and look at it really. So can I get you to jump through the link again that you created and come to your assignment inbox, please? Everybody okay? All right, hopefully you can see something very similar to mine. I've jumped into a different assignment inbox on a different course because I didn't want to skew your percentages by uploading the same student A and B documents. All right, so that's why I'm on a different one. So you can see this first one here has a 29% similarity. So obviously you wanna go in there when you click on that link under similarity, you will come to the Feedback Studio on a different window. So be careful if it's behind something or on another screen, just make sure you can see it. So that percentage 29, you can see here in this red panel. That number should be exactly the same as that number there. The red panel is the similarity report. So clicking into anywhere there will expand it and will enable you to investigate further. It will show you the source and then you can click into it further to see the exact text that it matches. Uh, I hope you saw where I clicked then. I'll just go backwards actually. I'll click here. Whoops. I'm just going to close out of the panel. Ah, what have I done? Okay, I've closed out of the panel. I'll do that again. So I clicked here. I went in there. And then I clicked on this sort of full source view. It looks like a book to investigate even further. Whether it's just, you know, phrases like the Prime Minister of Australia and ignore that. That's okay or whether you believe the student has plagiarised, you might have to jump into the full source text as well. You can also jump in between um, these uh, cases by clicking on the student paper. So here, this one, I can click here and it will take me, whoops, sorry, it's a bit slow. Did you see that? Uh, when I click here, it will open up the source and then I can go into the full source that way from the student paper. So just to recap, this is I know this is fast. The red panel is the similarity report. The flag at the top only tells you whether the student has um, played around with their word processing to hide certain characters and try to throw you off your scent or to replace certain characters. Uh, so it's unfortunate that students try to do this, um, but that will tell you whether they've used those sneaky devices there. That's the number of sources that match. Uh, that will take you into all the sources. And here's what I meant, this, um, what do you call that again? This funnel icon is where you can do some filtering. So remember I said in your settings, don't exclude the quotes and bibliography and small word matches. You can do it here case by case if you need to investigate further. So that's the filtering. All right, I'll stop there with a the similarity report because we do need to get to the marking. The blue panel at the bottom is the AI indicator. 
Now this one says 0%. So I'm going to close this one. And um, this one at the top, which had a 29% similarity, I actually used uh, Copilot Enterprise to input some text. And unfortunately, and this is why you really need the human touch. So I did this myself yesterday. I know, can you see this word certainly here? That word certainly is a red flag to me as a marker, as a human person. I know that Copilot, the AI tool, has responded to the prompt in the AI generator with the word certainly. Here's the information that you require. But the student has forgotten to remove the word certainly. So even though this has picked up a lot of text matching from the AI generation, it hasn't picked up that it was AI generated. I only know that because I can see this word certainly here, which doesn't match. So you really need the human touch. And by the way, you can click on the AI indicator. It will take you to a totally new area of Turnitin and it will give you the percentage and show you um, by highlighting on the student's submission. Unfortunately, I was unsuccessful at getting the system to recognise this AI. So please use it with a grain of salt. Um, it's not quite sophisticated enough yet. Did you want to add anything about that, Nathan, before I move on from that? No, pretty much what you said um, yeah. is what I would say as well. It's, it, it's an attempt at indicating, um, but... Whether or not it's going to be one hundred percent reliable, um, yeah, it's yeah. Sometimes it I is. I guess sometimes in that, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, in that example I showed you, though, at least the system, and this is what we need it to do, has picked up that the AI generator has plagiarized and pulled in a lot of text from other sources. So you're still going to catch the student that way. Um, now, just a quick word about the AI generative writing indicator. Um, it is, um, the system has been developed to the point that it will detect um, ChatGPT and it's able to detect from ChatGPT4 most of the time. I checked this yesterday on their website. It only looks at text or prose text, I should say. It does not look at lists, bullet point information and non-sentence structures and it is not visible to students. Turnitin claims 98% confidence. You can probably tell from the way that Nathan and I are presenting this information, I wouldn't have that high confidence. I'd be very much relying on your own academic prowess to investigate. And um, so when you do have to investigate, Use your own subject-specific knowledge to verify if they falsified data. I mean, you are the knowledge expert. You're familiar with the literature and the types of research that has already been published. So you, you might be able to see much better and more quickly if they falsified data, if there's inaccuracies in their bibliographic entries, um, or if some references are made up. And please follow your school advice for academic misconduct investigation processes. So all Turnitin is doing is highlighting areas of interest for you to investigate. And by the way, I'll send you this later, but this is this slide is just showing you how the AI tool works in Turnitin. It's taking a, a, a portion of a sentence and then the next portion of the sentence and then aggregating across those um, two portions of the same sentence, and then with the next portion of the next sentence. So I'll just read this quote here. Using the average scores of all the segments within the document, the model then generates an overall prediction of how much text in the submission we believe has been generated by AI. 
Okay, if you don't mind, I'm going to move on to marking, which is really the most important part of today's workshop. I'm still hoping, looking at the time, we can finish by quarter to 12, all right? So just bear with me. We're going to do four things now. We're going to look at the in-text annotation tools that you can use. We're going to look at the overall comment functionality and we're going to mark with your rubric. And we must consider the apply to grade function. So everyone, go to your Turnitin submission link. If you're not already there, click into it again, and you will open up um, your Turnitin window. I'm going to close mine and come to a different one, if that's all right. All right, I'm going to go back into my feedback studio so I can demonstrate the first thing on my list, which is annotating the student paper. Just like you have a pen in your hand and you're annotating a student paper, you can firstly, ready, number one, click anywhere on the screen. Just one click. And it will bring you this T option. So everyone, can you go ahead and click on the T? This will give you a text field. This example was presented in lecture four. Lecture examples were not allowed in your own assignment. Ignore my spelling. We're just doing this quickly for time. And there is a four-headed arrow that will appear that you can move to wherever you want to put the text annotation. If you find yourself writing the same comment over and over again, by all means, save them on a Word document or Excel document so you can copy and paste. And on that point, now I'm going to show you the bubble comment. Now I want you to highlight some of the text just like you would highlighting in a Word document. And click the middle icon, which is the speech bubble. Open that one. Okay, excellent point, but, ooh, uh, but be careful with spelling and expression or whatever, all right? There is some formatting options here, but it's very limited. You can also put a link in, and I'll just give you another example of that. I'm going to come up here. Okay, this one is not, oh, sorry, I've just lost my highlighting option there. I'll try somewhere else. Sorry, it's just not highlighting for me, so I'll come back into this one. Uh, let's imagine I want to put a link here about um, referencing. So you simply just, yeah, click on the, the, the hyperlink icon, put in your link text, MLA a referencing style guide, for example, and then put the link there and click OK. Now, before I leave the bubble, so we've done the in-text comment, using the text function, we've done the bubble comment. The third thing for number one is the quick marks, and these are comment banks. So you notice with any of your bubble comments, you can convert them to quick marks. I'm not going to do that straight away because I want to explain what quick marks are. Okay, remember the red panel is the similarity um, score and advice to you. The blue panel here is your feedback and marking. The top icon is the quick marks area. Quick marks simply means your comment banks. So I'm going to click on, click on quick banks. I'm going to choose a quick mark set or a comment bank. So I'm going to come down here and find the one that I want. It's the critical essay. Now, this critical essay set only has one comment, which is the lack of suitable synthesizing. 
So I'm thinking, that's strange. There's only one comment in there, so that's not the one I want. Oh, that's right. I wanted the historical analysis one. And then I can simply drag across the quick marks. Now, that is using the quick mark or the comment bank to mark. What about setting them up and informing all your markers? Open the cog icon here. And on the left are all the quick mark sets or the comment banks. You'll notice some of them are locked. That means I did not create them and I cannot edit them. The ones that have the pen icon, I created and I can edit. So I'm going to go to one that I created that has uh, a few more. So this one, the BE10 writing. Click on there and it will reveal all the click, click marks or comments in the middle section. I'm going to click on one of the quick marks and I can see what it looks like here and I'm able to edit it. I can also add it to another set. So if you have very common comments that you use just for writing an expression or referencing an accuracy, you can um, add them to other sets as well. You can also delete a set, hide a set. So if I hide this one, then it will give me the option to show it. And this is important, you can export to your markers. They will then import. And just as we explained with the rubric file type, when you export a set, is it working? Just come back here. Yes, it is working. It's a very specific file type. And going back to Kelly's question before, you won't open this file. It's only a file type that Turnitin will read. And notice this is a .qms extension and you will send it to your markers. They will come in here and, um, and import it using the same uh, three dots here to import the set. So that's an overview of marking or annotating on the student paper, using the bubble comments, and using the quick marks. Now we're going to show you the rubric, which is here. Let's make this a bit bigger. Quick marks, I'll come back to this middle one. Now we're going to look at the rubric. How are you going, everyone? It's 20 past 11, we're nearly finished. All right, so remember in our setup, when we set up the submission link, we selected a rubric that we created. So that name should be here. To mark using the rubric, and if you don't want to do any comments at all, it's so easy. If you've set up your rubric well, you can just use the sliders here. You can see the descriptors here as a quick glance for you to make sure you are choosing the right one. Or you can expand the rubric like this using this four-headed arrow. It will open in a new overlay window and look at that, you can just click. So it's very easy to use. And frankly, I don't know why more course coordinators don't invest a little bit of time to set up the rubric and then mark online in this way. Now, just be careful with the apply to grade function. You can do it here from the rubric, but I wouldn't do it yet. I would go here. And the final thing we want to show you about marking online is the generic overall feedback. So if you click on this middle icon in the blue panel, you can give overall feedback here, which is written, 
and you can also record your voice up to three minutes. But you have to do it in one go, one take. So if you make a mistake, there's no editing option. You'll just have to do it again. I'm going to allow my microphone. It's recording. Great effort, although some of your reference choices are a bit dubious. You should not use the references and the examples given in the lectures, but use this opportunity to go and do first-hand research yourself. Otherwise, it's a well-written and well-structured essay. Pause. It's there ready for the student to listen to. So I'm going to close this. Or no, I'm not. We want to consider the apply to grade. Let me come back here. Sorry. Uh, that one I need to move down. All right. Deciding who clicks apply to grade. Um, I'll come back to the groups. Let's just look at number six about apply to grade. If your student's submission is um, uh, has multiple questions, so let's say they have to write six paragraphs and each paragraph deals with a different critical issue and you distribute to your markers different questions. You do not want your markers to click apply to grade because that will auto populate in the Blackboard Grade Centre. So you need to tell your markers do not click apply to grade until all the markers have finished their particular question marking. So that's one part that is not automated in Turnitin marking. All right, I'll come back into mine and assume now that everyone has, oops, where was I? Everyone has finished their marking. So the rubric said 96 out of 100. Wow, this person's amazing. Apply to grade. And what happens? This number populates at the top here. This is a web-based tool, so you can be confident that it has saved and you can close. Oops, what have I done? What have I missed? Oh, I've got to save my voice comment. So lucky it helped me there. Stop recording. There we go. Now it's saved and I can X. Oh, what have I done? What have I missed? Click the little save icon there? next to it. The save, little save icon. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, exactly. Thanks, Nathan. All right, I should be safe now. Everyone cross your fingers and toes. Good. All right, so that has saved. I'm going to close this one. And if I go back into my Blackboard and to my Grade Centre, I should see that I have some submissions here. Now, yours will look different. Sorry, I'm on a different course right now because I didn't want to stuff up your similarity scores by using your student A, B and C documents. Now, if you do need to override a mark, um, especially considering that point that Turnitin does not offer mark ranges, uh, you may choose after some moderation with your um, team Whoops, this should be hidden, of course, in the meantime. You may choose to um, override a mark and mark it manually here. And I'm sorry, I'm not showing you the right com column. For example, here, you could override the this mark here. So you've always got that as a backup. Okay, marking by groups is easy as well. If you have set up your um, submission as a group and you've ticked group on the um, on the Blackboard uh, submission link, then your groups will come across. Um, it's Allocate Plus um, available too, I think, isn't it, Nathan? The groups will populate if you've chosen those groups. Um, they should just populate in there, I believe. Okay. All right. That, yeah, that's my understanding too. So you can mark by group here. However, so Buddy Check 4 is the only person in this group. This is a dummy site, so excuse me that I don't have a lot of students in it. Um, just be careful. If it's a group report, a group um, PowerPoint, for example, that they're uploading, 
Um, there are clear instructions in our guides. Only one person will submit. You will mark the submission. And then you will have to come back into Blackboard and write in the same score for the other students in the group. So group assignments are obviously very popular now and obviously with this workplace learning that we do and more authentic learning and assessment experiences, uh, that's the one downside of Turnitin. One student submits on behalf of the group. You mark that student submission in Turnitin, if I had one in here, and then um, you'll have to write the same score for the other students. You have to... You have to get your tutors to educate the groups in tutorials, preferably, for that student to distribute the feedback to their group members. So that is a downside we readily admit. And it's a process you have to give students um, education about. So I'll just let you think about that process. Um, sorry, I didn't show you that slide when I was talking you through it. So the students will get the marks when they're released through Signet, no problem, but it's the feedback that's the problem. All the effort that you've put into, into annotating or you know writing feedback or recording a comment, it's only that one student that will see that in the Turnitin uh, area. Any questions about that? Okay, I'm super happy with the time. Thank you for sticking with us. This is just a slide I like to show to sort of consolidate what you've learned about feedback. Here are your options. You've got a text entry that says good concession strategy applied here. You've got a bubble comment. You've got your overall uh, comment that you can give. And you've got your audio feedback up to uh, three minutes. Um, I won't spend a lot of time here. Um, I'm aware we've got a couple of learning designers as well, but we like to encourage you from a pedagogical perspective as well um, for good teaching and learning practice to keep your text comments short and positive. Make your feedback very specific and actionable if you have time to do so. We understand academics are short on time, like us here as well. So don't just say unclear. Why? You know, you might say refer to lectures, lecture from week five, or, um, you know, you need supporting evidence or whatever. When you use the bubble comment, um, that will be more detailed than when you type. But please keep your feedback uh, simple and respectful. And, and these are good ones, you know, check these details. You could illustrate this point, you know, give actionable advice as well. Otherwise, the feedback is a bit empty and meaningless for students. Use the overall feedback area to provide an overview and encouragement. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you next semester, etc. And Hong always likes to, Hong is one of our colleagues, by the way, she always likes to give this tip to, um, you know, if you find yourself being overly repetitive, just keep an Excel document ready to copy and paste them in so you can use them next time, or definitely put the effort into setting up your quick marks. So we're doing so well now. We've um, created a Turnitin submission link. We've created a rubric. We've used that rubric to mark. We've submitted a sample student, although when students submit, that will just auto appear. Uh, we've briefly looked at the similarity report and the AI writing indicator, and we've spent most of our time on how to mark successfully using the Turnitin functionality. There's just a 
couple of more things that we like to share in this workshop. And that is the Turnitin Analytics dashboard. So um, I'm surprised that not more people know about this or use it to check um, Turnitin results. So you can see here next to the assignment inbox, there is a tab for analytics. So I'm going to go to one that I've prepared earlier. Uh, this is in a course which probably none of you know about. It's in a communication course. And I'm going to click into this link. So it's brought me straight into the assignment inbox. So this is a real one. You can see that one yellow means a high percentage of similarity react, uh, report percentage. You can see a few of them have flags, which means hidden or replaced characters. Um, here's all the submissions. And I'm going to click on the analytics tab. So the area number one just shows you when they submitted. Area number two shows you the proportion of text matching. Three is the type of source that was most used to match. Four is the number of submissions and resubmissions. So if I go back to that one that I was showing you, oh, where was I? Oh, here we go. Um, you can see in this case that there were 26 submissions, but only two students bothered to take into account their similarity report and then resubmit as a result. Also, you can see that of that 26 students, only 11 viewed their feedback and they took a little bit of time to get onto their feedback. Just come back to my PowerPoint here. All right, at the bottom of the analytics screen, uh, you have some options for viewing um, your use of the rubric. So I'll just come back to that real one again. Why do I keep losing it? I don't know why I keep losing it, sorry. Where did I put it? Ah, down here probably, no. Sorry that I've lost it again. Here we go, okay. Um, so down here, you can see that this particular marker did not use this uh, numeric rubric. If I change this to the qualitative one, um, you can see that uh, the spread of, of uh, marks using a qualitative rubric. And did this person use quick marks? No. So you can see what quick marks, if you do choose to use the comment banks or quick marks, you will be able to see which quick marks are most commonly used and which are not used. So that is the Turnitin Analytics Dashboard. I'm just going to go back here on my PowerPoint. Um, there's the high level information at the top. And then if you're using quick marks and a rubric, um, you'll be able to see all that data collated for you at the bottom of the analytics dashboard. All right, the last thing we like to remind you of, especially if um, any of you are supervising higher degree research students, is that Turnitin has another tool called Authenticate. And Authenticate looks a little bit different. Um, it looks, can you see here this, this snip from a web page from Turnitin? Um, you can see the similarity report and the presentation of the matching percentage uh, looks quite different to the one in the Feedback Studio. But Authenticate is also a text matching tool. It's available to all UQ staff and higher degree research students. It's used to review work prior to publication. So researchers and publishers of their research will use it to put it through the system and check for, um, you know, veracity of their work, originality, and um, ensure correct citation has been done. Um, it does produce a similarity score and a report. 
Um, and yes, we do have guides available for staff and um, HDR students. Uh, we get very few requests for help in this tool. Um, but yes, we do have the guides available and it is a Turnitin tool fully available to all UQ staff. All right, where to go from here? Um, Nathan, myself, and my new colleague who's here today, Michael, uh, we are a team of six currently, and we are available, oops, that clicked through too quickly. We are available for consultations. So if you need help setting up a um, Turnitin submission link or understanding how to use the marking features and the rubric and how best to distribute it to your markers, et cetera, what type of advice to give your students on the Blackboard course site. Um, yeah, make yourself, um, make, make, make this, uh, make a, I'm sorry, I'm losing track. I am very jet lagged, by the way. Um, make use of this opportunity to book a consultation with us. So that's one thing. Um, you can also access all our guides um, at this website. They are very um, comprehensive. So a lot of people will come to the guide for Turnitin and never make a consultation request because they can just follow their nose with the guide. Obviously, we offer workshops twice a year through Ready to Teach and Ready to Tutor. So please encourage your tutors. Uh, in another two weeks, there will be one that only deals with the online marking for tutors. So that one will just deal with the marking. Um, and yes, we do have a help desk um, line, which even is available on the weekends. Um, that's, a, that's a CRM system. So you'll be, you know, your job will be logged in a queue if you use that help at elearning.uq uh, email address. 